This video is kindly brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence. Hi, my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. A few days ago, I went to an area of Tokyo I've always wanted to explore, Nippori Fabric Town. Each time I've been in Tokyo, it's been on my list of places to visit, but sadly, every single time I've ran out of time. And so to get there at last just honestly felt so surreal and it was worth all of the hype. So as I was shopping, I decided to film what I was getting up to and I'm going to include that footage in now so you can see just how amazing it is for yourself. And then I will show you all of the beautiful fabrics I picked up while in Nepori. So today I want to see if I can find some really nice embroidery on glaze fabric, some linen fabrics, maybe some floral rayon fabrics and some Japanese cotton Liberty-esque fabrics would be nice. And of course I want to see if I can find some Japanese sewing patterns to take home with me today. I'm going to try and keep the budget under $500. I've kind of been saving for this day for a very long time, but yeah, it's going to be pretty dangerous I think. <laughs> Nepori Fabric Town is about a 40 minute train ride away from Shibuya Station and is a street that is lined with apparently 90 fabric and craft stores. The biggest and most popular being this store here called Tomato. There are a few different tomato stores along the fabric street, the biggest being five stories of literal fabric heaven. Look how many there are. How am I going to choose just one? Oh my goodness. Also the gingham's down there as well. This is kind of cool. I'm not sure. I love that it's all my favourite things, floral, gingham and sea sucker. Oh, this one. Make a really nice like quilted jacket or something. I don't need it. But I love it. After feeling sufficiently overwhelmed in this store, I decided to leave without actually buying anything. I was just way too overwhelmed. And instead, I went to some of the smaller stores where I ended up having a bit more luck. I think I found the gingham I'm gonna get. It's got a really nice texture. As well as just general fabric stores, there are specialty stores dotted throughout the street, including this store here filled to the brim with buttons. There are also stores that sell just trims, there are bead stores, a store specialising in leather, and even this fabric printing and embroidery store, which would be so much fun to experiment with. Something that I just absolutely love about Japanese fabric stores is how much stuff they manage to squeeze into what are sometimes very small spaces. And even though the stores are completely jam packed, they are still so tidy and organized and are just genuinely a feast for the eyes. My favorite store actually ended up being one of the smaller tomato stores that was opposite the big five-story tomato store which had such a beautiful selection of fabrics including some amazing Japanese linen fabric for around like $20 a meter it was so affordable this store in particular was also a lot less overwhelming and less busy than the bigger tomato store so I ended up buying quite a few different fabrics from this store so after a full day of fabric shopping and my wallet feeling significantly lighter, let me show you all of the goodies I found. 
So before I get in and show you everything I found while shopping in Nepori, let's just take a quick break to talk about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence and launch your passion project. Whether you'd like to start making and selling your own products, create a beautiful portfolio to showcase your work, write a blog, or simply create any website of any kind, you can design and create your dream website all by yourself with Squarespace. You simply choose from their range of beautifully designed templates and then you can change up the template as much or as little as you like. You can change everything from the overall layout of the website to all the fun things like the fonts and colors with just a few clicks no background or knowledge needed in coding whatsoever. I have personally been using Squarespace to run the Rosary Apparel website and online store since 2016 and I have not once in all of that time ever thought about going with a different website builder because honestly Squarespace is a so easy to use like even I can do it and I'm not tech savvy at all and b their customer service is award-winning and honestly in the very few amount of times I've had to contact Squarespace with an issue or a question I have been so impressed with how quickly they got back to me and how they worked with me until the issue or problem was 100% resolved which I don't know, I just can't imagine you would get that level of service with any other website provider. And the best thing about having your own website is it really does take your brand to the next level as you have your own unique URL that is yours. No one can take that away from you. So if you're ready to take the plunge and create a website of your own, then I totally recommend you go and check out Squarespace using the link in the description below this video and take advantage of their free trials so you can test out just how easy it is to use for yourself. And when you're ready to launch your beautiful new website head to squarespace.com slash rosary apparel for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video and let's get into the fabric haul. So like I said, I managed to pick up quite a few different fabric pieces while shopping in Nepori the other day and I also managed to pick up a few other bits and pieces such as patterns and trims, things like that. And I'm so excited to show you everything I found. I think I'll start with fabrics though, just because obviously I'm most excited about fabrics. I can't even begin to describe just how beautiful all of the fabrics were in Nepori. I had someone ask me on Instagram the other day, like what the difference between fabric shops in Japan is like compared to fabric shops in Australia, such as Spotlight. And the only way I can put it is you know how in Spotlight there are sometimes some really bad quality fabrics? Don't get me wrong, Spotlight has some beautiful fabrics, but they are often mixed in with a lot of poorer quality fabrics. And the difference with Japanese fabric shops is every fabric in the shop is 100% the good stuff. I'm just so glad I finally got to Nepori Fabric Town so I can really experience the Japanese fabric shops to their fullest potential. It was just such a fun day. So yeah, the first fabric that I found was this amazing textured gingham fabric. There is just something so beautiful about the feel of this fabric. That's what I was drawn to initially. Obviously, I really love gingham, um, but I was kind of telling myself to try not to buy any this time around, um, just because I've made quite a few gingham things in the past. And even though I still love it, I just am trying to branch out into different kind of Prints. But when I felt this fabric and the amazing texture, I just had to get some. I also loved that this fabric is a really nice brown color. I just think this fabric is going to be so perfect for like autumn, winter. And so yeah, I had to get some. I think it is a great purchase and I think it's going to make such a nice cozy dress. Next, I have this really beautiful floral cotton fabric. It is just like a really light pale yellow color and it's just got the most lovely floral print. I've never really seen anything quite like it before. It's a very lightweight cotton, almost like a like cotton lawn, I guess. And this particular fabric did give me very strong Liberty vibes. It has a very similar quality to the feel of it as the really good quality Liberty cottons. And this fabric is one that is made in Japan. I'm not sure if the gingham is made in Japan, but most of the other fabrics I purchased are made in Japan, which is exciting. And ultimately I just fell in love with this print. So I bought about two meters of this from memory, which I kind of regret now. I wish I bought more, but I think I probably will end up making a cute blouse or something from this. Next, I have two linens. I found a whole section in one of the smaller tomato stores that had 
a whole heap of 100% pure Japanese linen for around $20 Australian per meter, which I think is a really good price. So I ended up getting two. It was really hard to pick the colors, but I ended up going my classic burnt orange because I just had to, it's my favorite, and I know I will put it to good use. And I also ended up getting this amazing duck egg blue linen as well. Look how pretty this color is. I just think this shade is such a classic, and again, I know I'll be able to put it to good use, and it will be such a nice kind of shade for summer. Next up, I have this fabric here. It's like a plaid check type fabric, and I was drawn to this section that had like a whole heap of gingham fabrics and this fabric was in amongst them. And at first I wasn't even that drawn to it until I had a proper look at it and saw that the check kind of has this like cross stitching fabric in it to add a bit of texture to the fabric. But if you've been watching my Japan Diaries videos, then you will know that I'm just a little bit obsessed with stitching these micro cross stitches at the moment. And so when I saw that this had kind of like a cross stitch section, I was like, that could be a really fun way to merge my two loves of sewing and cross stitching together and make the ultimate slow fashion project. Basically, I thought it'd be really fun to add some like cute micro cross stitch details to this fabric and then make a garment from it. It does sound like a little bit of a bonkers project, like that's something that would probably take me a few years to complete, but I love a project that takes a long time. I don't know, I love getting stuck into a project and working away and having something to do while watching TV and things like that. So yeah, once I discovered the cross stitch section, I just had to have this fabric and I think it could make a really fun project. Either way, it's just something different that I've never seen before. Like I've never really seen fabric with this kind of like cross stitch detail before. And this last fabric I have to show you is quite possibly my favorite find of the day. And that is this amazing Brodery Anglaise fabric. So something I had on the top of my fabrics to buy list while I'm in Japan is some nice Brodery Anglaise fabric, mainly because in Australia, it's not the easiest fabric to come by. Like I've found a few nice ones in Spotlight in the past, but usually the selection is very small. And I just had a feeling that Japan would do Broderie Anglaise fabric very well. And that is the understatement of the century. I was completely blown away with just how much Broderie Anglaise fabric there is available here. Like the big tomato store I went into had a whole massive table dedicated to this type of fabric. And I just was not mentally prepared for it. I was completely overwhelmed and had major decision fatigue. So I ended up not getting anything from that store, which was kind of a blessing in disguise because then I found this amazing Broderie Anglaise fabric. I've never seen anything quite like this before. It's like a grid design, but the actual squares that have been embroidered onto the fabric are just, so adorable. They almost remind me of little biscuits or something. They have a cute little scalloped edge um, with these little eyelet details as well. Something else I really loved about this fabric is that the selvage has a scalloped edge, which is just so, so pretty. And when I showed Matt this fabric, cause he was with me, he was like, you absolutely have to get that one. I've never seen anything like it. And I hadn't either, like it is just so unique, so different. And there was one in like a really cool white shade, but I ended up getting the more creamy version. I have no idea what I'm going to make with this fabric, but I've got plenty of it here so I can pretty much make whatever I want. I did find a really nice broderie anglaise skirt in a vintage shop the other day and kind of fell in love with it. So. I might end up making something inspired by that skirt. But yeah, this is what I love about fabric shopping in Japan. You end up finding fabrics that you would never even imagine or expect. And yeah, I just fell completely in love with this one. So next I have a little bag here with some trims and buttons. I went into one shop that was just fully dedicated to trims and it was incredible. So for some reason, my camera stopped recording. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but these are the trims that I purchased from that amazing trim store. This one here is probably the most me trim I have ever found. It's a really lovely caramel color and it's got ruffles and I ended up buying what was left on the bolt because 
Sadly, there wasn't much left. And this one here, I also just had to have. It's just some cute strawberries embroidered onto the trim, which I just thought was the cutest thing ever. And it's also just something a little bit different that I definitely wouldn't be able to find anything quite like at home. I also went to a button store and I had to get some buttons, of course. I got these adorable creamy flower buttons. I just thought they were too cute not to get. And I also had to get these buttons here which have tomatoes on them because there was definitely a very strong tomato theme in Nepori and I thought this would be a really cute way to remember the best fabric shopping day ever. And the last two things I picked up were some pattern books. So I did manage to find a few like individual patterns but I didn't find anything that completely wowed me I guess. But then I went to a store that had a whole heap of these pattern books and basically the books just have a whole range of different designs in them and then the patterns for them are in the back of the book which I think is a genius idea, I love that. Basically both of these books have designs in them that are just very Japanese. It's really hard to explain but Matt and I are constantly looking for like clothing while we're here that has a distinct Japanese cut or look to it. Ultimately everything in these two books has that look. It's just kind of like an oversized type look, but also interesting details around the collar and the sleeves have a distinct cut to them as well. And yeah, I'm just really excited to have a go at making some items from these books that are, yeah, very much that Japanese aesthetic. And the books themselves are beautiful as well. Like the photography in them is so pretty and inspiring and I just love how I've got like all the instructions in there and the patterns as well. Like it's just such a great concept and a really affordable way to get a whole bunch of patterns. Like I think these books cost me 1500 yen each roughly, which for the amount of different designs I've got is such a bargain. So yeah, that is absolutely everything I purchased while shopping in Nepori. I did somehow manage to stay underneath my $500 budget, which I'm so pleased about because I thought it was going to be way too easy to just spend all of my money there. So I've done really well, I think. Like the items I purchased are very me, but also quite different to anything I'd be able to find at home. And yeah, obviously it was a very overwhelming place to go. I'm sure when I edit the footage of our shopping day, I will see so many fabrics that I missed that I will be kicking myself that I didn't see at the time. Yeah, it's impossible to really see absolutely every fabric. I definitely think I need to go back and do another round of shopping there just to feel like I've done it justice, if that makes sense. But yeah, I am over the moon with the items I did find and yeah, I hope you enjoyed coming fabric shopping with me in Nepori Fabric Town. And if you're hoping to visit Nepori one day, then I really hope that this video has given you a little bit of an insight as to what it's like. If you enjoyed this video, then it would really mean a lot to me if you could give it a like. And make sure you subscribe to my channel for more sewing type videos like this one. Thanks so much for watching this video until the very end, and I'll see you in the next one.